the bombs. These two black dots represent the columns where they will place their sports bags containing two propane bombs. Eric notes that at 11.15 the cafeteria is at its fullest, with some 500 students in there. Their notebook is full of practical details for organizing the murders. It lists what still needs to be done. Obtain jerry cans of napalm, buy bullets, fill the petrol tanks. This sketch outlines how they will carry a maximum number of weapons between them. Eric Harris writes in his diary, Once I finally start my killing, keep in mind there are probably about 100 people max in the school who I don't want to die. The rest must fucking die. The 20th of April, 1999. The big day. Hitler's birthday, as it happens. Eric Harris notes the timing. Five o'clock, get up. Six o'clock, meet Dylan Klebold. 7.15, he goes to buy propane and I go get gas. Nine o'clock, put the bags in the car. Eleven o'clock, go to school. Klebold continues in his own diary. Park the cars filled with bombs for 11.18. Get out, climb the steps, wait. When the first bombs go off, attack. Have fun. Their aim is to kill hundreds of people. The cafeteria is packed. Surveillance cameras film them. Frank DeAngelis, the headmaster, is present that day. They brought in the bombs and then they were standing outside with the anticipation that once the bombs exploded, kids would be running. And when they ran outside these doors here, then they would kill them as they came out. So they had this elaborate plan to kill as many people as possible. The propane bombs, however, are badly made and fail to explode. It's 11.20 a.m. Richard Castaldo, who was 17 at the time, is having lunch with his girlfriend, Rachel Scott, on the lawn outside. He sees the two boys coming towards him. He just, uh, just uh, started, you know, firing at us, and then it hit. It, it was kind of um, one big spray, but it hit Rachel um, first, and then it hit me, like, you know, r right after. I heard, her, I heard her crying and stuff a little bit, and, you know, I... I kind of remember asking her if she was all right, which I kind of knew she wasn't, but I, you know, I didn't really know what else to do, and I felt like I should, you know, say something. Hit in the spine, Richard Castaldo is today paraplegic. His friend Rachel did not survive. She was just 17 years old. Klebold and Harris are standing here with automatic weapons firing down, and that's where they killed the, uh, shot the kids here with Danny Rohrbach dying. In the cafeteria, terrified by the gunshots, students hide under the tables. Pandemonium breaks out. Richard Long, the computer studies teacher, is one floor below in the library. He watches the assassins. I was very surprised that I saw Eric there holding the gun initially because I thought, my gosh, that's Eric. I know that kid. He can't be doing that. Patty Nielsen, an art teacher, comes face to face with Harrison Klebold. I saw a figure in a trench coat facing the other way. And it seemed like he had a gun. And I heard the gunfire, and my thought was that they were doing video productions because they have uh, you know video classes and I thought that's you know a really bad idea for them I never crossed my mind that it was a real gun it just didn't cross my mind so I went heading out there to tell them to stop he turned around and he looked straight at me and he held the gun and he fired it they smiled first and then he sm then he shot the gun it was Eric Harris, and I got shot in my shoulder, and the bullet just grazed it, 
but you know, at the moment, it hurt a lot. I didn't know exactly what was wrong. Patty Nielsen ran into the library to hide. stood with the phone and I continued to yell at the kids to get down. At 11.24, the shooting has been going on for eight minutes. Here is a recording of Patty's emergency call. Uh, teacher, call back high school. There is a student here with a gun. And the school is in a panic. And I'm in the library. I've got students down under the table, kids. Heads under the table. I do not know who the student is. Okay. I saw a student outside. I was in hold the audio box. He turned the gun straight at us. The headmaster, Frank DeAngelis, is also confronted by the killers. What was happening is a gunman, instead of pursuing me, ended up coming after Dave Sanders, who was coming up the staircase here, saw the gunman, turned around, and then the gunman stopped and shot Dave in the back. And so that stopped the gunman from coming after me, so actually Dave saved my life, and it cost him his life coming down here. Dave Sanders, who had been a teacher at Columbine for 20 years, would die three hours later. The murderers return to the cafeteria and throw two small homemade bombs. At 11.29, Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris enter the library, where Patty Nielsen and 40 students have taken refuge. The carnage is about to commence. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold walked around. I couldn't see them, but I could hear them. Looking under the tables, saying cruel things. I'd hear them taunt somebody, and then I'd hear them shoot. And I think, you know, they just killed that kid. Well, you get to hear Eric and Dylan shooting and executing people and laughing about it. Um, and in real time. I mean, it's the actual, them actually doing it. They just made fun of people, made fun of the kids. You know, they made racial remarks. They made fun of somebody's glasses. They said somebody was pathetic. Just, just mean, just mean. Eric is much more stoic. Um, he does laugh about a few things, but Dylan's having the time of his life, like it's a party. And he's killing people like he's a party. I mean, it's unbelievable how happy he is. He's giddy about doing it. When he walked past and then came back, I thought he was going to shoot me. Where I was was where a chair should push in on rollers. He took the chair, he picked it up, and he just slammed it on top of the counter right above my head. I don't know if he saw me or not. I don't know if he was doing that to scare me. I don't know. These pictures were filmed by the police several hours later and revealed the full extent of the bloodbath. Hundreds of shots were fired. The victims were cowering behind desks. In seven and a half minutes in this library, Klebold and Harris killed ten people and wounded twelve others. The two killers return to the cafeteria one last time and throw another bomb. Then Eric Harris takes up a position on the stairs and fires at the sports bags containing the bombs. He tries very hard to make them explode, but in vain. Dylan Klebold throws a Molotov cocktail and the cafeteria erupts in flames. The killers, as if in a daze, take in the scale of the butchery. The Columbine massacre has lasted a total of 50 minutes. At 12.08, Klebold and Harris commit suicide in the library, each with a bullet to the head. The descriptions of the assassins spread like wildfire through the media and among the students. They described one as being 5'9", 5'10", wearing a trench coat. And when I heard that description, I immediately knew it was Eric. I just knew. He's the only person I could think of at the school who is that, who could do that. The next thing they mentioned, Dylan Klebold, and that floored me. Um, and it, my brain kind of shut off the rest of the day. The killer's identities are confirmed